Hey everyone, I'm Eric from Lonesome Reader. This is something of a difficult video for me to make, but I'm really angry and I want to say something about it. And I know that there's lots of terrible things going on in the world and there's lots of bigger things to be angry about, but this is something that I'm angry about. So ordinarily I'm really nice, I love to support authors and publishers because I know it's really difficult putting a book out into the world and I admire and praise their effort. But this is a case where I feel like the publisher has really let down uh, this novel and its author and something should be said. I read Sebastian Barry's novel towards the end of 2016 when it was published and I loved it. This is a brutally honest and unflinching story about a boy named Thomas who escapes the Irish famine and death of his family to enter into the US military in 19th century America with all its horrors and bloody battles slaughtering Native Americans and fighting gruesome battles in the Civil War. But he also meets another soldier named John. They fall in love and they adopt a Native American girl. The way Barry handles this aspect of the story is so skillfully done. It's not showy, but it's unequivocal about its subject. And their love affair is shown consistently throughout the entire novel. In December, I was kindly asked to be a judge in the British Book Awards in the fiction category. And I was delighted that Days Without End was in the shortlist for this prize along with some other fantastic books. I made a video discussing the shortlist and offering a giveaway uh, for somebody to receive a copy of the winner. A man named Richard left a comment on that video and he wrote, I would really like to win a copy of Days Without End because I'm struggling with my sexuality and I don't have anyone in my life who supports me with it, so it would be really great. I'm from Nicaragua and there aren't a lot of diverse books here. That comment really hit home with me uh, because it reminded me when I was a gay teen and growing up in a rural area and I didn't have a lot of access to gay literature or role models. This is exactly the sort of book I would have loved to have read alongside all those dreary historical textbooks about the Civil War and heterosexual romances. Part of the brief about judging the British Book Awards was to merit not only an outstandingly written novel, but the whole publishing process that went into its creation. As such, publicists submitted briefs about this process. Faber and Faber, who published this novel, stated in that brief that they knew it was a very different kind of novel for its very well-respected and established author, Sebastian Barry. And they wrote, uh, quote, this novel centers on a gay love story, but one rendered in an incredibly sensitive and understated manner. As such, we wanted to hold that back for the reader to discover and only subtly reference it in the presentation and copy. And I thought, hmm, that statement feels very suspect to me. Rather than giving any plot spoilers or allowing the reader to discover the story for himself, this feels like the publisher is nervous about alienating the author's established readership uh, by saying that he's written a gay love story. They also wrote, we wanted all aspects of its publishing to feel bold, confident, and fresh. Which is ironic because the way this book was presented and promoted feels limp, cowardly, and old-fashioned. So this is the cover and you can see it's a lovely rural scene with a waterfall and a spray and birds flying and a rainbow. Uh, which is, of course, a symbol of gay pride. But this doesn't sync with the shame-filled way that the book was marketed and presented overall. The jacket copy, which describes the story, states, After signing up for the U.S. Army in the 1850s, aged barely 17, Thomas McNulty and his brother-in-arms, John Cole, go on to fight in the Indian Wars and ultimately the Civil War. I don't know about you, but brothers in arms sounds to me like a nervous old auntie who doesn't know how to describe her nephew's long-time same-sex lover. It completely sidesteps what's so special and unique about this novel. In addition, as far as I'm aware, the publisher's campaign did nothing to reach out to a gay readership. Sebastian Barry came to London to promote the book and did several events, but none of them with gay reading groups, 
gay literary salons or gay organizations, and the city has many of these. Places like the fabulous lawn-running bookshop Gays the Word. The manager from this shop told me a few weeks ago that he didn't know about the book's gay content until like well after the publication of the novel, and of course they stalked it after knowing this. At the events and in interviews that Sebastian Barry did in London, he talked very openly about the novel as a gay love story, how he dedicated it to his son who experienced homophobia, and how he couldn't comprehend prejudice. So it's not like he was shy about the subject matter. I'm assuming the publisher just informed him of their marketing campaign, and he left it entirely up to them, but who knows. Like I said before, I know that publishing and marketing a book is really difficult, but it feels to me like they took a severely conservative approach to it. And it hasn't paid off. Days Without End won the Costa Book Awards, uh, which is a really big deal in the UK. But I've heard from someone who works quite high up at a big name bookseller that this is the worst selling winner of that award for many years. I found the comment Richard left on my YouTube video a bit heartbreaking, and I'm sending him a copy of this novel as well as some other LGBT books. But I think his desire for more gay literature like this really goes to show that there is an audience out there hungry specifically for stories about long-term loving gay relationships. Part of the genius of Barry's novel is artfully reinserting stories like Thomas and John's into history, where such stories have been predominantly unknown or selectively left out of our social history. It's wonderful that gay marriage is now legal in the UK and Ireland, which is a really big deal, but people need to be aware that such long-term gay relationships have always existed, and it does a tremendous amount to bolster isolated gay individuals' sense of identity to know this. But readers need to know that this is what the book is about in the first place, and this is something that the publishers failed to do out of what I can only assume is cowardice. This is particularly a shame because Faber and Faber have published some amazing books from authors I've loved, like Nadim Aslam, Amer McBride, Paul Kinsnorth, Lucy Caldwell, Patina Gappa, Edna O'Brien, and Thomas Morris. They've done a great job with presenting readers with challenging, fascinating, and immersive reads. But on this occasion, I think they severely mishandled it. So read this novel because it's beautiful and it powerfully inserts into history a gay love story of the kind that you won't read in any actual history books. But I'd also urge you to read other great gay books that do this. Read Patrick Gale's A Place Called Winter. Read The Life and Loves of Lena Gaunt by Tracy Farr. Read Hyde by Matthew Griffin and read the beautiful memoir The Pure Lover by David Plant. But I think it's a damn shame that Faber didn't reach out in its publicity and the way it presented its book to an audience out there eager for these stories. I'm sure there is a reading public out there homosexual and heterosexual and everything in between that will love and enjoy this story as much as I did. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you think I'm overreacting or being too sensitive about this? Are there other books out there that you think have been completely mismarketed and missold after you've read the actual content of the novel? Did you previously feel uninterested in reading this novel but are now jumping to get to it after my description? Uh, let me know your thoughts. I hope you're all doing well. Thanks for watching and happy reading everyone.